Hello and welcome back to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Lois here and today I'm in my studio thinking about spring and summer. It's still winter here in the UK but in February we can begin to see a few hints of the lovely weather to come and the change of the seasons. So today I'm going to be painting one of those sort of grey sky days in the summer when the trees are in full leaf and the fields are flourishing but the grey clouds seem to diffuse the light and give it a really magical glow. The first thing I'll do is show you a time lapse of the sketch using a pencil and lightly sketching out a simple scene. So we've just got a very simple field, um, some distant trees, a fence and a gate and a couple of mid-ground trees which will be our focus. I'm using Saunders Waterford cold pressed watercolour paper. It's taped to my board and my board's at an angle of about 20 degrees. Um, so gravity will help with the painting. Here is the line work or the sketch. Uh, pause it here if you want to refer to it. Or if you'd like a copy of that, then there's one available on Patreon. So follow the link below um, and sign up to my Patreon page if you're interested in that. I'm starting off with the wet in wet method. Um, I've dipped into my dirty paint water. You can see that I was uh, working on something pretty dark before, uh, but I don't mind because the overcast sky is going to be grey anyway. So I want to make sure my sky is nice and wet, then give that a moment to soak in. And then I can use a paper towel or a piece of tissue just to wipe up around the, around the edges of the tape so I don't get any water running back across um, into the painting uh, across the tape because that can give me some run backs. So once the sky is wet and the water is soaked in, I'm going to use up paint from my palette to mix a neutral sort of warmish grey. Now this is mixed up from burnt sienna, raw sienna, perylene green, Payne's grey, um, maybe a bit of sepia that was left on my palette. And all I want is, as I say, a warmish grey and I'm going to make a graduated wash that's a little darker across the top, coming down to that sort of lighter part of sky across the horizon line. Once I've got the sky in, I'll just sort of leave it alone so I get this lovely clean wash and then use a bit of raw sienna across for that lighter little patch of field just beyond the fence and the gate. And I've just used the one brush so far, um, a Mottler brush, one and a half inches. It's synthetic and it's made by Princeton. Any wash brush will do. And now I'm sweeping across um, the raw sienna mixture to which I've added some sap green and a little bit of um, burnt sienna and then I'll add perylene green to darken it up across the bottom corner. I can use a fan brush to create a little bit of upward vertical texture across the foreground and then using um, a mop brush I'll add in some perylene green and sap green um, into the tree's foliage just to get that softly diffused and started off wet in wet. I'm now using the tip of a palette knife 
to scrape through the rich paint and that gives me some lighter branches which will give me a bit of variety when I come to put the darker branches in later on. If you don't like to do this then just leave this stage out and when your painting is dry paint in the branches using something like a rigger brush or a liner brush of some sort, anything with a good point. This layer is nearly finished and the washes all look where I want them to be so I'm going to lay my board flat now because I don't need gravity to help with it. I want everything to stay where it is so by laying the board flat the washes won't run any further downwards. I will let the washes dry for a minute or two keeping an eye on them and once I see the shine beginning to go off the foreground I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of ordinary table salt across the foreground but please bear in mind that table salt in a painting isn't archival it creates lovely effects so when you're just practicing and playing around or if you don't want your painting to last for between 50 and 100 years um, then don't worry the salt will be fine. I'll sprinkle it in, each grain will give me a little tiny bloom or flower and it will give me these lovely effects and suggestions of a foreground. I can then scrape through the damp paint with my palette knife to sort of join up some of the blooms that haven't yet happened but to sort of create the, the look of a few stalks and grasses and brambles and things like that and hopefully the little blossoms will grow around them and give me some pretty effects. And it's now time to leave the washes to dry completely. So here's the dry painting. I've lifted it back up to 20 degrees and I'm going to carry on with it, this time painting it wet onto the dry painting. I'm using um, my neutral colour and a size 14 round brush and I'm going to paint in the distant tree line really faint almost lost in the mist and then once I've painted that distant tree line and got it a little bit darker on the on the right hand side I shall leave that to dry completely as soon as that's dry I'm going to mix up a real dark adding Payne's grey sepia to my neutral um, keeping it at a nice dark value and I can begin to paint in my tree trunks and my fence and gate
I'm using my size 2 rigger brush here and painting in the branches um, just coming up to meet the canopy then I shall darken up the canopy uh, so I won't fully paint the branches yet I hope you notice um, that I use the rigger to paint some sort of wriggly patterns around the base of the trees and their trunks this is to indicate um, overgrowth of ivy and shoots growing around the trunks and things like that adding character to the tree I'm now going to build up uh, a bit more detail and tonal value in the canopies of the focal point trees. I'm using the rigger brush for this and I'm dipping into either perylene green uh, for my dark tones, sap green for my lighter tones and then dipping into water then to soften various edges. So I have a combination of soft and hard edges or lost and found edges in the canopy.
And now that I've got a nice varied canopy, I'm using the rigger brush and my dark mixture again to thread a few branches through the canopy, through the sky holes, and also some extending out in the further edge and just to complete the trees a little bit more. Keeping them loose, there is some detail here, but they're still fairly loose. Then I can, using that dark colour, um, add in a little bit of um, a ground plane below the trees, just a little tiny bit of detail, something and nothing, just some weeds and undergrowth growing around the trees. Not too much, you wouldn't see too much from this distance. And that's it, that's the finished painting. So let's remove the tape and have a look at it and see how it looks with its clean white border. Peeling off the tape is most artists' favourite part because it reveals the painting um, in a really good light. Um, you can look at it with fresh eyes and sort of see it without all those marks and brush strokes that go across the tape and onto the board. Now I'm looking at this and I think it needs a little bit more to balance it up over this side. A bit of something and nothing, um, maybe a little bush that comes and breaks out over um, the distant tree line, if you see what I mean, just to sort of balance that up a little bit. What we're doing by painting, sort of overlapping the distant tree line here with this mid-ground line um, in the shadow of these trees is just pushing the background back a little bit further and making sure that our point of interest around the trees and the fence um, is a strong visual pull. So here's the finished painting. I had a lot of fun painting that and I'm really looking forward to the spring and the summer weather. But there'll still be plenty of sort of bleak wintry demos to come um, as we continue through February and March. Thank you so much for watching. Please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much to everyone that supports the channel on Patreon. We really do appreciate you. And if you'd like to support the channel, then please follow either of the links below. I'll see you again soon. Take care and have a lovely weekend.